director of Kerala Shipping and Inland Navigation Corporation. He is also the managing director of Kerala Irrigation Infrastructure Development Corporation. After graduating in law from the University of Kerala, he was selected to join the prestigious Indian Administrative Service in 2007. For our global participants, Indian Administrative Service or IAS is the administrative arm of the all Indian services of government of India. It is considered the premier civil service of India. IAS is a part of the permanent bureaucracy of the nation and it is an inseparable part of the executive of the government of India. Honorable Prashant Nair IAS has served in various capacities in various sectors including tourism, taxation, roads, water supply, skill development, etc. And he headed two World Bank projects, Jalanidhi and KSTP. With his citizen-friendly and participative approach in the government governance, he earned the moniker of Collector Bro during his service as a district magistrate in uh, Koriko district of Kerala. A hunger eradication program, Operation Sulaimani, initiated by Prashant Nair under the project named Compassionate Koriko, was chosen as one of the 50 inspirational projects by International Tourism Fair ITB in Berlin. And uh, this uh, initiative also won the Social Media Empowerment Award by Digital Empowerment Foundation and Frederick Norman Foundation. And he is considered as uh, one of the pioneers in using social media for governance in India. As I said earlier, he has been an avid film buff and his short film Devakanam, the God Particle, was uh, premiered in the Cannes Film Festival in 2018 and he is the author of the book Collector Bro, a quixotic tallals of uh, a civil servant published in this year. And uh, being uh, one of the most tech savvy IAS officers from time to time, uh, Honorable Prashant Nair talked about the gamification in the learning process and uh, um, uh, its applications in the daily challenges. And uh, we wholeheartedly extend a warm welcome uh, to Nirmala College and to this professional uh, development program to you, sir. I invite Honorable Prashant Nair IAS for the talk on new normal and gamification as a learning tool. Sir, please. Thank you. Uh, I hope I am audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. So. First of all, thank you. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to uh, be part of this session at Nirmalagiri College, the college that has a great history and a reputation, uh, which has a lot of alumni working in various places for, for great repute. So uh, it, it, I'm really happy to be part of this session here. And I'm also happy that uh, we are discussing gamification is something that uh, I think we Indians or at least in Kerala, at least we uh, really don't comprehend uh, entirely. Uh, it's all, all, I'm just getting a uh, message that the audio is low. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Okay, but the audio is okay. Yes, sir, the audio is okay. Okay, okay, fine, right, thank you. Yeah, so what, what I'm saying is, uh, Education is a concept. It's a, it's a larger concept than just games. Unfortunately, uh, you know, we most of us in India uh, seem to understand gamification as some sort of video game. Uh, I'm not. I'm not joking. That uh, clearly what's happening. Uh, you know, you have this video game industry, for instance. Let me just uh, uh, touch upon that. Uh, you have something called the video game industry. The uh, uh, games are the same. It, it runs in billions of uh, uh, dollars of business. Um, it's more than 150 billion uh, dollars business that's happening across the globe. And you know, you know how much uh, how much of uh, India's contribution is there in that? Hmm? It's virtually nothing. Why have a uh, you know preset mindset prevents us from getting into uh, something like this? 
we are uh, kind of conventional i'll say now, all of us seem to believe in uh, traditional modes of uh, study you just want to uh, read mark up the books and write the university exam and you're through done that's it but is that reality is that the way the world is working right now is that the way education or anything is working right now unfortunately no so wh- how does the human mind function uh, while learning or even taking up any task why does a human being do something these are fundamental psychological questions which have to be clearly understood in the very beginning we are looking for gratification every human being is looking for gratification you you are looking for uh, responses you are looking for answers when you do something uh, you want the result to be seen that's that's fundamental if you are not getting a result you are not doing anything that's basic human psychology now then comes the question how long can you delay the gratification how long yeah some people have uh, you know a better sense of looking ahead in future and waiting for results like you you don't invest today and try to take up the result immediately you might be willing to wait for a couple of years fine that is one way of uh, you know handling gratification and generally generally the psychologists say that if you are willing to wait for your gratification there is more possibility that you might improve or increase your success in uh, you know everyday life but when it comes to learning or when it comes to taking up any task everyone appreciates the fact that no prolonging the uh, gratification is a challenge it is easier to get someone involved in a task if the gratification is given immediately you know how gratification doesn't really mean uh, some sort of huge reward it could be just a bit of a dopamine rush just a bit of a dopamine rush just as you um, you know check your whatsapp or uh, facebook messengers why do you keep doing that you keep doing that because you are looking for some result same you know when when you have a new email for instance or when you have a, when you are um, you know breaking open or tearing and uh, exploring your new uh, mail you are getting some new letter from somebody you don't know who it is even if you there is a joy in opening the letter and reading it you have a slight rush of dopamine that makes you happier slightly happier uh, and today in today's world Uh, we are all in a dopamine rush because um, every moment we are looking at some new message some messenger something from whatsapp something on the social media something popping up uh, so repeatedly you are being flushed with so much of dopamine uh, overflow that uh, you you are not really prepared for a long term gratification wait now this is crucial the problem that are get that gets associated with this is is you know um, your ability to learn your ability to understand your ability to take up tasks get drastically affected because of this uh, you are not you are no longer willing to wait for a you know long term gratification period and here comes in the importance of gamification like you know, the very same principles that are spoiling you if you turn turn the table round and make it useful for education useful for taking up your task your job uh, making it more effective that works that's quite simple uh, you know in psychology how do you do that you you break up the task you break up the assignments you break up your education you break up the you know portions and apply gamification principles to keep engaging you uh, what is gamification you need the response as well isn't it you you should know where the stages are what's your progress uh, how and when you are being evaluated or you, know, you don't even feel like you're being evaluated you should feel like it's part of a whole game um the response and the reaction should be so in- intertwined that it takes you through a smooth uh, process and you will know that you are doing it hmm? now it sounds very simple but it requires a bit of design aspect it requires a bit of uh, you know psychological know how uh, pedagogical skills these are all required so that you are able to design something that accurate and functions properly and i'm really happy that um, uh, this, this college normally normally the college is actually thinking of those things uh, not many uh, in the education sector are understanding this uh, only only a few private uh, uh, learning app uh, you know uh, entrepreneurs they are the ones who really understand this and they are the ones who are making most of it 
but i think there is application uh, to this knowledge at every level even um, even in a face to face classroom as well it's not just uh, uh, a learning app kind of a technology it is something that involves in our day to day life in everyday life uh, every task could be easily gamified uh, it requires a bit of imagination and it requires a bit of uh, uh, thinking outside the box right so uh, with those words I, i'll just say that you know uh, we need to understand this first of all we need to accept that there is a new uh, area that really developing and there is a whole uh, scope of um, possibilities lying in front of us which we have to grab with both our hands and make most of it and i repeat um, video games are not just games of that kind it's not something that's to be banned learning to be <laughs> had from these video game developers because they they go deep into the human psyche and understand human mind response there are lots of applications to this that lots of to this when it comes to day to day educational um, you know interventions or even task uh, interventions which uh, directly relate to our job any job there is a gamification aspect that to it and most of the cutting edge research in this is happening in video gaming most people may not really like to appreciate or understand or even accept so with those words i'll i'll just uh, you know so a discussion with these words maybe we'll have a, a discussion sort of thing because you know even even this um, technological platform like zoom is providing a scope or a possibility for communication uh, again because interaction whenever there is an interaction whenever there is Yeah, uh, sometimes you are in a way to the principle of gamification. Uh, this uh, standard boring classroom sessions where you have minimal interaction, you are doing away with that concept. You are not accepting that concept. Whatever name you call it, you maybe maybe traditional uh, teachers may not like to call this, you know, an application of gamification. But then it is. uh in every sense every day every life every instance has some sort of a uh, gamification principle associated with it the uh, you know earlier we realize it the better for us so maybe let's have a um, uh, sort of thing so that we make use of this technology platform rather than me sort of one sided uh, uh, talk where it's like more like a all india radio giving a sermon um because uh, i don't know what exactly you, all of you would be really interesting uh, interested in knowing and uh, i'll be just going in tangent so let's have a open discussion sort of thing where we can have uh, discussions and uh, share our experience and make it more uh, fruitful to all of us we well, let's make use of time what is if someone could just answer and monitor the questions it would be easy the participants uh... please uh, switch on your videos and uh, kindly ask your doubts or uh, have a discussion with uh, um, prashant nair is because a resource person expects us to have an interactive session so questions please Uh, so may i ask a question uh, it is about the uh, like exploring the rewarding system you know in our brain you know depending upon the dop- dopamine um, you know you always need that uh, dopamine to keep you happy and uh, when people are talking about games or you know getting addicted to video games uh, is it healthy to introduce this into the educational section uh, sector especially for uh, small children so what's your opinion sir yeah yeah gamification larger principle and uh, the easiest example for you know, this gamification principles being used or rather misused or extremely is this video game uh, that mention that as an example but of course you know everything is good in uh, moderation 
there are guidelines, there are principles, there are there are certain um, uh, you know provisions in many countries that restrict a certain kind of uh, age-wise, and also there are even advisories for you know time limits, the screen time that's you know, permitted. There are advisories for those uh, because the a larger dose of uh, content uh, dopamine rush is not going to do any good because uh, you 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 can't immune. You you need larger doses. It's like um uh, some sort of um, shall I say uh, uh, addiction, uh, larger dose and a continuous dose. That that makes it difficult. So a lot of exciting stuff happening in your life. Just look at this way. You have a lot of exciting things happening in your life at one side. Interested uh, in the less exciting things. Things make you uh, give that adrenaline rush. Uh, th 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 that's not going to enthuse you any longer. But those things will be very important. Those things may not be exciting, but those might be really important things in your life. It could be boring stuff where you have to apply your mind, you know, have some dedicated time allotted for that. Now, those things start suffering. That's what happens in a, you know, a typical school setup where the child is not able to concentrate on the books. Simply the communicate. The books don't have that gamification aspect inside uh, inside them. So the child's mind is still obsessed with the exciting video game. That is the problem. That is the real issue. So now the problem has to be solved uh, by accepting the reality that dopamine rush is happening all around us, all around us. You have it happening everywhere. Now, how do we apply the very same principle improving our education part? That is a uh, you know, basic question which we started off with. So you need to have um, a bit of dopamine rush provided through the education system itself. Essentially, what I'm saying is you have to make education exciting. In, in, in a nutshell, you can say it should be exciting. It shouldn't be boring. Make life exciting, make education exciting, improve uh, the engagement aspect, that is essentially what you should do. And cut down uh, this high dose uh, dopamine from which you might have from things that are not really useful to you, which don't really improve your skills. Uh, as, as, as I say, there, there could be very wild uh, video games that don't really uh, enhance any of them, which provide any training to you. Mm -hmm. uh, other than maybe a bit of a hand-eye coordination, other than that, you probably may not get anything out of it. So those things you need to cut down as well. So that moderation is the answer in my in my opinion. Thank you. Uh, I have a thank question. you, sir. Mm -hmm. I think there is a lot of uh, knowing at the earlier age, like from class eight or uh, something like that. What is psychology? And uh, because now in our earlier times at out, you feel like a, uh, something good means we used to clap. But nowadays, mm. um, when the students, um, I mean, a lady of late 40s, so at our childhood, we used to see this. And nowadays, what students use, when they feel something good, they used to shout and shriek and all this. What do at our times when something was, uh, uh, something wrong was going on? So do you think the excitement, the dopamine rush expression has been changed now? Uh, not really. I think it's more of the society, isn't it? The society and uh, the, the responses that the society uh, appreciates. Uh, a, teenage, a teenage person uh, has to be a rebel. That has been like that time immemorial. I think even in Stone Age period, you might have uh, you know, a, a guy who would be trying to look different, sound different, um, you know, he likes excitement or she likes excitement. Uh, rather, the he tries to impress the she with a lot of excitement. So the typical uh, thing you find in all the uh, uh, animal king where you try to um, impress the mate. These are, these are cardinal principles that are inherent in uh, not just psychology, but in biology. Now, Things haven't changed much. In the present society uh, or societal setup, where is the occasion for a youngster to express his rebellious attitude and show off that he is soda hutke? Now that he tries through these uh, hootings and creating sounds, um, you know, uh, a kind of tension. 
attention seeking uh, behavior as they say and at the same time confirming with the rebels you shouldn't be seen as uh, a very obedient child you should be seen as a nice guy you know a nerd this has been happening for a long time now after a while this will you know come down uh, so we don't we don't we don't get worried seeing that and uh, i think that they have drastically changed or anything now um, for instance cigarette smoking was really fashionable it was really fashionable in the 70s it was seen as a rep activity some something very smart you will if you watch the movies of the 70s you will find all the stars smoking like hell but now you will not find that very attractive uh, i i don't think that's appreciated the society and slowly that's come down uh, but car racing car racing still kind of continues bikes those still continue maybe after a while after a few more years uh, it may not be simple because the number of people who are engaging it or you know getting involved in it uh, goes beyond a threshold and it's no longer the thing okay there, there, there should be that rarity aspect also so changes with time rather than with biology uh, the the societal uh, you know um, uh, shall i say the the the, the setting the rules of the society keep changing and that is what uh, um, results in the different kind of behavior in in um, Uh, learning psych- that is a good question because learning psychology um not essentially the theory and the boring stuff but at least that self awareness part where you are able to observe and you you are able to understand what you are and why your emotions are going in a certain way why your behavior is in a certain way why do you uh, get upset why do you get angry why do you uh, get emotionally interested in someone these are basic things which um, a youngster should know and wellness aspect as they say the self awareness aspect that should be taught at least those tech taught because when you are we are failing to observe yourself you get into deep trouble uh, i think in that sense a fair bit of psychology is important and just as a fair bit of or just as bit of a fair bit of uh, you know history economics everything is required for a, a youngster uh, now is a comp- education you find that the specialization happens far too early you don't get to know the basics of the other subjects at all uh, which is creating a bit of imbalance in most people you you are not seeing things in perspective and you don't know the history uh, of the country of the nation of the civilization uh, of the human kind you have a different take on things isn't it uh, you you are not able to see things in perspective similarly if you don't have a proper standing of yourself you you again will not be able to take a proper stand on anything uh, so for for taking perspective to having a good stand and all a uh, fair bit of uh, psychological knowledge is good thank you thank you sir uh, i am myself dr jiji kumari from kasar gold mm-hmm. sir how can we apply this gamification in higher education especially to increase learner motivation motivation and better uh, student engagement Hmm. Well, it's a, it's it's something which I think all teachers have been doing in some way or the other. Um, you know, in in a classroom, when you when you provide for this routine quiz or test or any of those kind of things, and you give a feedback, um, you are applying a bit of a gamification principle because that's a game. Uh, there is an there is an option given to the a student by his free will, and you give a response to that. and response is received the mark for which uh, the right answer there is a slight rush of dopamine and yes while well, uh, you have done something and there is a reward system as well but you know we have been stuck in time we are not taking up new method uh, invoking uh, interesting technological interventions so all those changes that are we are not invoking them in this sphere now if if um, educators sit together and devise um uh, methods i'm so many interesting um, gamification aspects that can be introduced into education and you know every day would be fun day it will be interesting it, uh, you the, the student will not even know that you are actually learning you are just taken through a you know a, pack, a kind of a game process and keep getting feedback it, it's exciting it's en- engrossing actually 
so that is what we need to uh, you know uh, do essentially now how to design um, firstly you need to have psychological expertise involved you should know the pedagogy what the subject and then based on that you have to have a customized unique solution for each one of these you can of course have principles look at the um, look at the educational apps for instance the page apps nowadays uh, really popular ones just take any of those and if you just watch what what are the principles they are adopt see how the stages have been set for instance there's a progress st stage you have stage wise evaluation how is this evaluation done uh, even even most of these apps are not doing uh, really uh, innovative or outside the box kind of things because what they say is when i have interacted with a couple of them what they say is um, you know the general public is so to uh, this classroom thing and um, uh, the teachers questions and all that that they are not able to uh, you know introduce something new because the um, uh, clientele is not accepting it you know the parents or they say that uh, no no this is not exactly like a classroom session uh, for instance you have um, um, the pythagoras theorem or you have this uh, all the triangle and all this stuff drawn and you say suppose this is this suppose this is this is how we are taught test tube and you say suppose there is uh, nacl in this suppose there is sulfuric acid in this and this is how we are taught and when you actually show when you actually show in a um, uh, app where the, the the game process through uh, that you have is more introduction of animation and you have lots of possibilities brought and you show it actually what's happening that is not exciting for many people what they say is no we are used to the old way we are used to the being drawn on the board and all that stuff. so they want uh, when they are shown graphically that the uh, triangles can go separate either they form something a whole and all that stuff so not like the real problem is that um, you know you, you you are stuck with the present system you are not having an open mind at all even even innovative um, gamification solutions brought out by uh, these app devil Uh, even that is not being accepted properly and they are forced to change whereas if you um, one classic example i'll give you if you look at the um, uh, textbooks in the us for instance again for psychological uh, psychology subject itself if you just take a um, uh, book uh, you'll find that the american books are completely different the way it's uh, written is completely different uh, you take a indian textbook you'll find that entirely different comparison at all and this is good or that is good or uh, i'm not doing any comparison but to to uh, someone who is fresh to the subject someone who has no um, you know preconceived notions about the subject i am sure the american book would be more comfortable uh, because i found it myself when i was uh, my optional subject for the civil service was psychology and when i was taking it up as a fresh student um, i can book to be very comfortable because they gamification principles nicely uh, not that there is much of an interaction but then um, there is a inherent gamification aspect uh, like you know you, you you feel getting that aha you know effect in between while you go through the book there are there are uh, comics there are lots of comics that um, um, deconstruct really complex subjects to um, you know fun aspect you, you know recently i saw A, a textbook on physics uh, high school physics fairly complicated subject but the way it has been to a comic it's unbelievable most of you would have read uh, uh, sapiens i'm sure all of you uh, would have at least heard of sapiens uh, it's a it's a best seller book it it says the history of mankind from um, the very inception to this day uh, now the sapiens the, the book has been uh, converted into a no uh, kind of a, um, a comic i don't know how many of you have seen that you could just google it on and see it's a wonderful book it's it's been converted into a, a comic where any child could understand this very complex and difficult book difficult in various sense uh, called sapiens how is it possible that's because you you have to understand the subject properly you need to know what the book says uh if you have to start off with gamification you have to start off with understanding the subject properly and then create a game out of it you have to create something out of it that with the psychology of the learner 
and think of the state think of the uh, interactive sessions that can flow from it first of all there should be a uh, uh, you know the, when you say gamification don't immediately jump and assume that it has to in uh, interaction from day one or uh, from the very beginning that you have to first start off the game in the mind of the learner there should be a invocation of a game at the same uh, it, it, it's, it's a psychological uh, you should feel like there is something happening that is not as simple as um, just reading and mugging and uh, reproducing the same words were bad time it's not that it's about invoking a thought of a game in the behold as they said uh, the beauty uh, lies in the eyes of the beholder so you have to start off with uh, a game conceiving a concept which has this dopamine exchange processes you know structured within it it calls for a bit of a dedicated uh, uh, you know uh, effort you need Uh, spend a fair bit of effort to happen overnight. Um, a bit of a gamification principle is something which any teacher, any professor can very easily uh, try out in his uh, lecture halls. But what I am saying is a larger picture, larger story of um, you know making integral to your uh, learning process. Yep. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Hello. sir. I'm Vishnu Priya. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I am Dr. Pratibha Energy from the University of Dodoma. Morning, uh, Energy, sir. Okay. Sir, our Prime Minister was once telling that uh, we are producing more learned and educated people rather than skilled people. Now, I would like to know how uh, this process of gamification will help to produce the skilled people, uh, particularly in the higher learning education. Yes, sir. I think, uh, sir, you have actually touched touched upon something that's uh, integral, and uh, the honourable prime minister is absolutely correct in that, isn't it? Uh, we yeah. have a lot of learned people, but you know, people who don't know how to do things, people who right. don't have the skills. Um, let's look at it this way. You know, our educational system has also been structured in such a way uh, that we are not focusing on skills, but more on bookish knowledge. Right. Bookish knowledge. Ne- this gamification aspect I, again repeat because bookish knowledge is nothing but re- rote learning it is repetition of the same thing without understanding the concept um you know internationally there is a uh, there is a uh, belief that asian educational systems focus more on this bookish way of learning rote learning rather than understanding the concept now the gamification principles focus on understanding the concept um there is a uh, popular example being given uh, you are given a string of letters a b c d blah 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 all that stuff and you are expected to by heart it and immediately uh, you know repeat it usually it's tough you are not able to uh, reproduce it exactly but if you if you scramble it scramble those letters and make a word out of it you will be able to remember it any time even years later you will be able to recollect but if if it's just in a so one 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 good way uh, one good way to now uh, get this entire knowledge base to be imbibed as a skill is to be able to explain it to somebody else or uh, practice it you have you should be able to do it you know uh, just going around saying something and walking the talk is completely different isn't it so when it comes to gamification principle you are forced to do it you are forced to understand the concept and that makes a big difference again this is a cardinal difference as they say in uh, you know the western way of uh, education our system there, there are good things to our system as well there are certain some things uh, which can be by hearted some things that can be understood just like that don't don't get into the details but that that applies to lower classes uh primary classes fine that's okay but after a while you should not be uh, depending on on that you should be able to understand things the concepts uh, cl- concept clarity should be there otherwise you are not going to reach anywhere uh, so right. yeah i think gamification is a major answer to this so there is a follow up question to this uh, you see yeah. if you see our uh, ncert pattern it also focuses on the activity based learning uh but uh, if you see most of the schools and even in the colleges also they are not following that ncert uh, what it focuses on yes. so what is the government's initiative 
in uh, implying those uh, NCRT principles into the even to the private colleges as well. Yeah. I, activities that are being provided in the uh, th th those are in uh, most of these conventional teaching classrooms. The teachers teach the uh, text portion and they the activities. Ah, this is just time pass. That right. that is a problem. In it is the it is those activities that is, that are going to get the so subject or the concept with clarity into the minds of the now uh, giving those activities is a guideline given by and for the to make up now how to convert it into a game is entirely with the teacher the teacher so it doesn't become a, a game just by printing it there it becomes a gamification process only when you're forced to apply your mind and when you get a feedback and when you get when you get evaluated there is a process of it a child is taught about germination of seeds there is a classroom session on germination of seeds fine after that you are giving seeds uh, the kid is told to go and you know plant this see how the sapling comes out uh, measure it you know the growth measure every week you find the uh, improvement or the growth whatever and report it back now this involves getting involved in the process. Your mind starts applying into it. Your your cognitive skills are forced to you know uh, get into it. You have to water it. A lot of things get into the process, and then there is this feedback. You have to take this back to the classroom. Show you see others also bringing the uh, their similar saplings. There is a comparison. There is a grading. There is a bit of a competition perhaps, and there is a winner perhaps. I mean these are things which. A teacher has to bring in innovatively. Uh, the guidelines in the textbook can only remain as guidelines and not get converted into games uh, that involve your cognitive skills. I mean, without the teachers getting involved or trained properly, that's not going to happen. Um, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of interesting gamification interventions that uh, even these um, uh, online learners introduced so forced to pull it back. The conventional teachers were not happy with it, or the conventional, um, you know, the, the parents and students also were not really happy because they were they were taught in a particular way, taught in a particular way, not able to understand something being told uh, slightly in a different manner. But problem here is the problem here is that the future is with gamification learning. Uh, you have to understand the concept. Um, in future, the way uh, the artificial intelligence and biotechnology, the kind of strides that are happening in the scientific world, what's going to happen is people who don't understand concepts, people who are not able to move fast, change their domain, they, they will not survive. You're, you're not going to survive with rote learning in, alone. That's not going to help you survive in the next uh, you know, you know, generation. You need to have the skill to move around sectors to have to shift even uh, your job you have you may have to shift the entire sector and move into something because some sectors it might just close down overnight yeah. you know there are there are industries that uh, get finished off overnight there, there was something called pager i don't know how many of you remember there was something called the pager yeah. <laughs> you, know, the, the, you, you used to get these messages when sms came the pager is gone when whatsapp came sms is <laughs> the, the, these things happen overnight um you, know, you don't see floppy disk. You don't see even uh, disk uh, series now. But things are moving so fast. Imagine 10, 20 years down the line, uh, cars. The cars are automated now. You, ha in fact, the app down drastically if you have a perfectly automated car. The dri uh, autonomous cars, as they say, because you don't need any drivers. So the drivers would be off. There won't be accidents. Because it's all perfect. If there are no accidents, what will happen to the insurance agent? The insurance agents will lose their jobs. I mean, it's, it's a cycle. Lots of things happen in time. At the end of the day, uh, you may be forced to shift from one sector to another. By hearting and understanding a particular subject like that, that is not going to improve your uh, employability. Your skill will not be there. Your skill will be in understanding things, in knowing the concept. Only then you can shift from one uh, domain to another domain. To shift from one domain, you need to have perceptual clarity than by hearting capacity. So uh, th that's where, uh, as you rightly said, we need to push for this gamification thing in a big way. Good morning. Uh, this is Nagaraju.
Hyderabad. Uh, I just would like to make two points. One, uh, I don't think gamification is anything new. In fact, people have known it for thousands of years when Degree. learning used to be fun and there were all kinds of game elements into the class. There were come there were rewards, there were incentives, there were rankings and all that. So we are only using a little jargon now to call it gamification and whatever. I mean, I don't know if you agree with that. Uh, the second thing I is... I do partly agree with that. I partly agree to the extent that we do have this uh, you know, rudimentary kind of um, gamification aspect which we use in our regular classrooms. But over years, you will also agree that elements have come down and the emphasis on textbookish by hearting has gone so high whereas world over the reverse is happening you'll find that the gamification aspect involving technology as you rightly said it is nothing but a jargon this is basically a psychological concept but they are introducing a lot of technology and improving the game aspect they're taking it to another level so we need to now get back to our roots because i'm sure uh, during our google system and all i'm sure person gamification because you have to give something get back the result isn't it hmm. in fact fun it was in the past fun is not future in the past today we have lost that and then we are trying to regain that i think right absolutely absolutely sir i fully agree sir. hello so my name is from goa yes ma'am uh, just I wanted to tell you that uh, uh, in uh, our syllabus, we have uh, one text known as, I'm teaching English, one text known as Bimayan. So that is a graphic novel. So uh -huh. the students are more interested in that novel than compared to the other novels. Because they have the bond art uh, form which has been used in the novel. And uh, the way it is described about the caste discrimination and then the newspaper clippings. It's a beautiful uh, way of portraying uh, the current scenario, the political and then the social scenario. And students could understand that better than other novels. That's what which uh, uh, our uh, yeah. teachers experience is that. So, uh, but what happens with the uh, syllabus, uh, two vast syllabus, we, uh, because well, this novel we took uh, a long time, uh, the students enjoyed. And, but what happens with the uh, vast syllabus we cannot implement such kind of games, uh, gamification uh, in completing the syllabus. So in that uh, situation, what should we do? Yeah, actually, uh, I think, you know, uh, we we need to, uh, as teachers, I mean, I think know, knowing the uh, concept and showing the way is more important. Uh, showing the way to various other gamification concepts which have application on your syllabus. For instance, uh, when, you are, when you are learning history, for instance, uh, you're learning, uh, you're, you're studying uh, modern India. There is this um, uh, Gandhi film, an internationally acclaimed Gandhi movie. I remember as a civil service aspirant at that time uh, for revising and for understanding the concept and the, the details and you know the dates, the events. I used to watch this movie a couple of times. In fact, I used to read this Amar Chitra Kadha stories on uh, Indian history very often because that was one of the best uh, ways of uh, revising. Uh, and let me also say, you know, with with changed times, we have more adrenaline pumping, um, you know, things happening all around us. The dopamine rushes more. So uh, when Nagaraju sir was mentioning, you, you remember earlier on we had this. Uh, a cl a classroom sessions where you had a bit of gamification, but then the dopamine, the dopamine rush for such sessions would be maybe somewhere here. It's not really high. You can't expect um, a few classroom questioning and a quiz or interactive sessions to be so exciting. But when, when you, you finish the class and you are looking at a uh, game, the dopamine rush is really high. There is no match. So how, you, you actually now need to match that as well. How do you do that? You need audio, uh, visual uh, system to come into play. A mere reading uh, or mere um, uh, you know, listening may not really uh, suffice. When you get a video support as well, the audio and the visual aspect, that makes a better impact. Um, so maybe uh, you know, even VR, VR, virtual reality can also come in. I mean, I'm not saying that everything um, has a one-way solution. Each, each subject, each content, uh, each context would have a different approach and and 
uh, as, you, as you rightly said, you know, time is an issue. Resource is a major issue when you are when you are trying to focus on um, uh, you know certain subjects. There is a limit to the resources you can apply or put into you know, certain subjects um, portion. There, I think we need to apply our common sense as well. Um, let us focus on difficult portions. Let's focus on difficult and um, slightly complicated um, uh, portions and chapters where conceptual clarity is really important. Conceptual clarity is the fundamental issue, isn't it? So things that could be imagined and understood by the students uh, with a plain reading or you know, without too much of a uh, gamification content being infused, let it be. Let it be that way. But complicated subjects, which require um, a bit of conceptual clarity, let us focus on creating a gamified uh, you know, learning uh, portion for that. Let's, let's create content. Now, content creation is a costly affair. It's not easy, uh, especially uh, high quality content. You, you, if you look up uh, YouTube, you will find a lot of content, a lot of content on uh, similar subjects. But if you really look at it closely, you'll find that the, most of the content is not really top class. Or uh, it, it might have mistakes, and maybe they have not applied the uh, principles properly. Uh, so, so, so essentially what I'm saying is we have to pick and choose our battles. We have to pick and choose our battles because our resources are limited. So let, let, let's start off slowly, but essentially we have to go this way. And one more thing is the reading habit is dwindling amidst the students. So in what way this gamification would help uh, to enhance a uh, reading habit? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, um, I, I, I think reading, uh, conventional reading, as someone uh, you know c c c catching hold of the book and um, uh, uh, continues to spend hours on it continuously without a break, that is slightly difficult in today's world. That is why maybe a lot of people are moving to audiobooks. Um, and yeah, there, there, there are uh, individual differences also. Some people have a problem continuously reading. Um, the good thing is that technology has enabled us with content in different formats. Now you have audiobooks, you have even the content being converted into uh, graphical uh, content on YouTube. Now, reading is not just reading from a book. Uh, we have this old school concept of saying that no, you, you need a printed book. Printed book uh, is the ultimate thing. Uh, if we just leave that apart, if we leave that uh, preconceived notion apart, I think there are multiple sources of the very same knowledge. Knowledge is important. Uh, and when you're approaching this knowledge, let's make use of different pathways. And let's accept individual differences also. Everyone may not be in a position to read uh, you know, there could be individual differences. So let's make use of different pathways to the source of knowledge. Um, and let's make use of these gamification principles in between. Like audiobooks have a lot of interesting stuff nowadays. Uh, even there's, um, you know, uh, video content of certain books are also coming out where you, where you could decide the, uh, you know, root of the book, for instance. There are multiple endings to certain books, uh, especially when it comes to fiction. And in the process, what happens is you're learning a lot of la words, you're learning um, uh, pronunciation, you're learning a lot of things. You start uh, speaking like them, you uh, you, you, you use of, the, uh, uh, of those phrases and um, you know stuff. So there is knowledge coming in from different pathways, not just books. Uh, and, and, and because of the dopamine rush thing and the competition, I say, say it's a dopamine competition, um, in that certain boring stuff, which really don't give so, so much of a dopamine rush slowly comes down. And that is where probably uh, book reading is taking a bit of a beating. Um, you have to get excited reading or just staring at a plain page with few letters. Isn't that very you know, awesome? You have to have that imagination. You should be able to invoke that kind of an excitement from that book. Uh, that's not very easy. That's not at all very easy. Uh, so when that's not possible, let's look at other sources. I mean, let's not be very rigid. That's how I'll put it. Thank you, sir. And I think uh, we have reached uh, our time. Like uh, it is twelve twenty-five IST. And uh, thank you, sir, for answering the questions of uh, 
our participants and our chat box is already flooded with questions and there were a lot of people who raised their hands but i don't think we will not we will be able to cater to that um and uh, this was an exceptional session when it uh, comes to uh, the educators perspective uh, yesterday the, uh, the session was about more of the technical side and now uh, people are asking questions uh, from the side of a teacher or uh, um, an, an, an academician and thank you so much for giving your analysis uh, in this um, area and now let me invite Dr. Shibin Mohanan, Assistant Professor, Department of Botany, uh, Nirmala College for the vote of thanks. Uh, good afternoon and a very warm uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, it is my pleasure and pri uh, privilege uh, to propose the vote of thanks uh, to, uh, to the today's session. And uh, I take this opportunity to uh, acknowledge the contribution of all those who have uh, uh, or who has worked day in, uh, day in and day out to make this day possible. The first and foremost, uh, foremost I'll uh, thank the Almighty for his blessing and grace uh, for making this day successful. Then I will take, uh, I'll thank uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Prashant Nair IAS uh, for his uh, eminent, uh, eminent presence and agreeing to grace the occasion uh, with its uh, valuable time and giving us his valuable time and spending nearly two hours with us uh, of, on a busy day. Then I am uh, happy to extend my sincere thanks to our beloved principal who have been the pillar of strength behind all the activities of the Nirmala College uh, who is uh, not present today. Uh, due to some official engagements. And then I would also thank, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Sonia Kuriakos, uh, the IQAC coordinator and the brain behind uh, today's session and who have been working uh, throughout uh, the day and night uh, for making this program successful. Then I would also like to thank uh, Dr. T.M. Jacob uh, for all the support rendered for any activities in the college and being a wonderful human. Next, I will also like, I'll thank uh, Mr. Prince Samuel Joseph, who have been the technical head uh, behind all the uh, activities and the event, who have been uh, providing all the technical support, along with his team of uh, students and Manu. And finally, uh, I'll also like to thank uh, Dr. Boni Bose and uh, Ms. Ambali Joseph, who have been the coordinators of the program and for making this program successful. Last and but not the least, I would like to thank uh, each one of you from uh, for joining the event from across the world thank you and stay safe thank you thank you again on behalf of namila college um, i thank all the participants and uh, honorable prashant nair ias for being with us thank you so much so we have reached thank the you, end of you, the session thank you sir and uh, tomorrow is the third day of the program and uh, uh, Dr. Manu Melvin Joy will be talking about gamification for learning and development and he is an assistant professor uh, in the School of Management Studies in the Cochin University of Science and Technology and uh, the session will start at 10 a.m. IST and we expect you all there. Thank you. Have a nice day. Nirmala College Muatipura.